Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Sword of the Stars 2. Well, that didn't take long at all. I just literally clicked and turn and we discovered FTL economics on the next turn. So this episode is going to be all about the trading, the trade system and that part of the economy. Um, just, I guess, before we get started on that, let's just assign our next, our next technology. Um, I, so like I said, we, in terms of, um, what I would like to get, I definitely want to try to do an early play with the deflector shields. Um, normally I still, I still want to get probably these technology and material applications. It's just a great, you know, reduces cost. So that's important. And, um, and I also definitely want to get orbital dry docks, um, eventually right and they're good early technologies to get what i'm going to do first is i am going to do the feasibility project for deflector shields and the reason is that when you complete a feasibility project you get a bonus cash reward which is equivalent to like the budget you spent researching the feasibility project so this allows me to kind of move forward in technology because I got to do this research at some point anyways, but I'm going to get cash back. And that's important because I'm about to invest a lot of cash into the trading system. So I want to know if this tech, this tech path is going to be an option for me. If it is, then I can consider, you know, certain builds, but if it isn't, then I really have to get point defense right away. So I'm going to do this feasibility project right away. Uh, now, let's talk about how the trade system works. So one thing I haven't really talked about yet is in terms of the user interface, there are change star map view modes. So there's several view modes that you can use here. You can also access these by hitting the number keys, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, which is always how I do it. So you'll never see me click here. So this is the normal view, one, the two view, you see all the stars turned gray. This tells you what you've surveyed and what you haven't surveyed. So very useful when you're planning, you know, your next survey moves. Um, the other view that we, well, let, let's go through all of them. Three is, well, let's let's use this menu here. So three is provinces. We're gonna talk about provinces soon. They also are re related to the trade system. Support range um, for soul force. It doesn't really matter because soul force ships because of the node lines have just huge support. This is not really relevant for this game, so let's not bother talking about this right now. Sensor range is, is pretty obvious. It's based on, like we have stations here, so we can see out a certain distance, and we have ships here, so we can see out a certain distance. So this is when we would see a fleet coming into our space, basically. Um, terrain is just like a, uh, this is more like the lore, basically. It's just kind of names of, of areas in this galaxy so that's just for your information and finally number seven which is the trade view so how do you set up trade you need a few things we need civilian stations civilian stations can be upgraded with modules including docks which will allow freighters to dock there freighters carry goods goods are produced by telling your planet for example this planet here to invest its production instead of in ship construction to invest it in producing trade. So every planet has to make a choice. Am I producing ships or am I producing goods for trade? That's why I, to keep things simple, I like to just try to categorize systems as trade or producing ships, right? In the early game, you're going to have a mix of both. But in the end game, just for the management, it's easier to just have it I'll be one or the other. Of course, there are exceptional circumstances where you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. So um, for each tick here that I go past, I'm going to produce one good. By the way, I, I'm in trade view here. If I click on my planet, I can also adjust the slider directly here. If I, let's say I set this to, you know, one tick here, I would be producing one good. I would then require one freighter to move that good and generate money to generate like a trade route if you will the uh and that's basically it that's how it works uh, it's going to go to an import somewhere else right 
Um, now, there. so the question then becomes, okay, obviously we need to build civilian stations. So, you know, let's go, let's start doing that right away. So this, these guys are still supporting there. Let's just start with one civilian station here. So let's, let's uh, reactivate our construction fleet. Construction one. So, build us a civilian station. Orders received. Okay, we'll so right next away. turn we should have a civilian station there. Now, we need to build freighters. And here is another major sort of strategy decision you have to make. There are two ways to build freighters. One way is you just build the freighters, right? So, for example, build ships, freighter. The basic freighter is automatically prototyped for you, so you don't have to design it and prototype it. So I could just start building freighters if I wanted to, right? Um, also, if you were going to build freighters, you could build them directly from the trade view here. Uh, so in this system, I could just click build freighter and it would just queue them up, right? Uh, now, I don't want to, so actually I'm going to go back here and cancel this I mean, actually, I do want to, but I don't want to do it yet. So I'm just going to cancel this right now. Okay. If you build freighters like this, there are certain advantages. One is you have very fine control over where your freighters are and when they get built. Um, and you can immediately ramp up your freighter production, basically, right? If you have a station that has a lot of docks, you can just fill them up with freighters as soon as the docks are free. And so you have a more instant, uh, you know, gratification, if you will. You will have to pay upkeep on your freighters, however, like pay, excuse me, pay maintenance on your freighters. Um, and uh, maybe annoyingly, like you have to go and bother to build all the freighters yourself. You have to go through your whole empire and kind of micromanage building the freighters and making sure that you don't have like systems that have that are lacking freighters and extra freighters elsewhere although you wouldn't usually have extra freighters because you wouldn't have built any extras so those are the advantages and the disadvantages this way of building freighters doing it manually will push your government towards the left right because it's kind of like an interventionist kind of policy um by the way notice here uh Let's see, Pla Mines. This is weird. This is not what I thought. Uh you know, I'm this is a weird Like I this is a this is exactly the opposite of what I thought it should be. So this says supported underdeveloped colony plus two economic liberalism. So that is pushing it that way. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around. That is very strange. Either I completely misremembered that. I don't know. That seems... That seems incorrect. Um, I'm going to want to double check that because I might be playing this completely wrong. Um, in fact, why don't we go and double check that right now? Um, I'm going to, while I talk here, I'm going to find my, I'm going to, forgive me for a moment here, I'm going to go find those famous XML files that I said were, you know, in the game folders and, and whatnot, and I'm going to dig those up. So, what I'm confused about is I suddenly saw this line here, which is saying that supported the underdeveloped colony is pushing this to the right and I thought it pushed it to the left which is like a major mistake if you will because this is not at all what I thought it was going to do uh, so let's go and see now uh, let's see if I can find up this file um, just a moment so I'm uh, just going through steam here okay and uh, it's assets base and here we go it's a uh, I think it'll be in uh, government action modifiers let's try that one to XML 
I don't even have a... I guess, I like, I, I don't even have Notepad++, plus plus, which is one of my favorite uh, easy-to-use text modifiers. Okay, but we have uh, this. Now let me get my recording software to add... Uh, to add this uh, this window here. Okay, there you go. You should have Notepad there. So this is one of the XML files. Um, so here, this is an example of how how they are, right? So the Y scale is authoritarianism, and the X scale is economic liberalism, right? So if um, so here, you have actions and the change that it will have, right? So for example, we know that if you establish a colony, it will move two units to the left and two units down, right? Um, if you build a police cruiser, it will move you up by one, right? These all make sense. Building a colonizer is gonna move you three to the left. Now here's an important one, right? If you build a freighter, it moves you to the left by one. But if you, and this one here, uh, build freighter trade is referring to the other way, which involves stimulus spending, then it will move it to the right by one. Um, I, like, I want to double check to make sure I'm not, like, uh, interpreting these numbers wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, I think that is, this is correct, right? Yeah, the habitation goes one. Yeah, I guess that, I mean, it just, it really seems, it seems wrong. I don't know why I was under that impression. Um, I guess, so basically what that means is if you wanted to scoot your government over to the left, let's return here to, uh, to our game. What that basically means is if you wanted to move your government to the left, then you would have to just build your colonies, but then not support them, which just seems counterintuitive like that seems like that would be more of a you know interventionist kind of policy um okay well in that case maybe we're just gonna change our mind and maybe we're gonna run this game using maybe we're gonna try to move our government to the right then why not we ha i've had a change of heart so so far why was why had we moved to the left because I built a bunch of colonizers, right? And building colonizers shifts you to the left. Now, had I known from the start that I was planning to do a right government here in terms of uh, sort of economic policy, then I would have maybe not built as many colonizers, but that's life, it happens. So now we're gonna shift to the right much quicker because I'm gonna continue these support missions and so like I said, now when we build our trade system, there are two ways. One way is to directly build the trade, directly build the freighters. The other way is to use stimulus spending. And how this works is over here, we can choose to devote some of our budget to basically giving money to industry and then having them build freighters and run them on their own. Now, of course, you don't have as fine control over it, um, but it's like a hassle that you don't have to worry about. So there are sort of advantages to doing this. And making freighters like this is going to, um, is going to move your slider to the right. So that's nice. Now, in order to build a freighter, you must have at least 55,000 per year in stimulus spending. There are other kinds of freighters, um, but it's the number of freighters that counts. So the kind of freighter that is, you know what, forget it. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about the other kinds of freighters later. It's not important now. Um, for now, all you need to know is you need to spend at least 55,000 per turn. You're not guaranteed to get a freighter every turn, but it is 
possible that you will get one. So this is how we're going to build our trade network up. We're going to give stimulus and then freighters are just going to appear. Now, I'm not going to do it yet this turn because I don't have any place to dock the freighters, right? We still haven't built our, our docks at the civilian station. In fact, we haven't even built the civilian station. So in a few turns, that's what we're going to do. Um, so that is the plan for now. I'm really surprised and kind of confused. I clearly am misremembering, uh, you know, how it worked. But I was sure that supporting the colony, the colonization of the underdeveloped planets pushed it to the left. But apparently it pushes it to the right. So you learn something every day, right? Um, okay, let's uh, keep going then. Let's get our civilian infrastructure set up. Um, I mean, honestly, that kind of makes... It makes it... It makes it easier to go for a right, quote-unquote, right-wing government in, in the context of this game. Let's be clear, when I'm talking left-wing and right-wing stuff, I'm not... I'm neither endorsing nor uh, dis you know, I'm not making any comments about actual real life left wing right wing politics. It's just how they chose to describe it in this game, right? Um, and let's mothball this fleet because we don't uh, need it right now and we want to save on maintenance. But without that, uh, without this factor, it makes it usually really hard. It's tricky to push the government to the right. But knowing now that I can support colonies, that kind of helps us because that's another, you know, lever that we can, you know, activate to help steer the government in the direction we want. Okay, we've built the civilian station. Let us right away go to it. So you have three kinds of modules we can add. Habitation adds like percent value to the trade routes, which is sure is nice. Um, docks is what we need for our for our freighters. And then your warehouses you're going to get automatically as we upgrade the stations. So actually, we want to upgrade these stations these stations as quickly as possible. So we're going to do just a save clicks. We click on automatic upgrade. It'll put one of each. Confirm build order. But we also want to maximize docks. So I'm going to, after that, make another dock so that even if it isn't level two, it will have the maximum amount of docks. So that will start getting made. If we look at on the trade view, we have now our first empty freighter berth. So it would be reasonable at this point to start spending stimulus money on our trade system. Remember to make sure that you set this to trade. Mining stimulus and colonization stimulus is a thing, but we're not going to get to that yet. That's much later. And here, unfortunately, you do have to come and periodically adjust it to make sure it, it Spending more than 55,000 does nothing, basically. So you constantly have to adjust this to keep it low, to make sure you're not wasting uh, wasting funds. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this turn. Oh, our construction fleet is finished here. So we can cancel the mission. mission terminated. And we can, uh, I guess, I guess this fleet is going to go back this turn and then we'll construct here. So we'll have this construction fleet go over here and build. Oh, why not? Why won't you let me? Oh, ha, huh, of course. So I don't have enough population in this system yet to actually build another station. So that's interesting. Um, all right then, let's uh, let's go ahead and build the civilian station here. Anyways, Hi, sir. We'll get it built. okay, and let's go to the next turn. Now, if we do get stimulus, then we'll get a notification. Uh, you know, in the turn processing. One of our colonies is self-sufficient now, sir. Okay, Barrett is basically done. Right? Look, climate hazard is almost nothing the infrastructure is almost 82 so we're gonna finish to base. uh this is not what i wanted to hear so deflector shields feasibility 56 percent um so i really don't know if i'm gonna have it right it's a toss-up and at this stage in the game it's too risky to invest 
maybe 15 turns in technology and get nothing for it. So I'm not going to continue to research it. I'm going to just say, okay, thank you for the report and we have to make other plans. So that's, honestly, I would have preferred, almost preferred if they told me, no, you have no chance of getting it. I mean, of course this means later on we can try to research it, but my early fancy plan of using deflector shields is probably not gonna work. We need to go for uh, real point defense. Now, uh, this is, now I have to decide two things. In what order do I do this? Do I first go for um, the few low hanging uh, economic technologies? So this one, material applications. So my, my plan is I wanna get material applications, orbital dry docks, then some military technology, which will be point defense. Um, you know, so these two, uh, I think what I'm going to, I'm going to get material applications because it reduces the cost of stations as well. And we're going to spend a bunch of time building freighters and stations. So this will be worth it. I'm going to wait and before I get uh, orbital dry docks because that just reduces the construction cost of cruisers. And I'm not going to build cruisers until I develop the new technology I want for them. So it's going to be material applications, and then we're going to go and look into point defense after that. Um, let's see what else happened. Uh, the first survey fleet arrived. We're going to mothball that fleet as well to save on maintenance. Um, now, why don't I just dissolve and like actually disband the ships, right? Because these are like once I get point defense, I'm almost never going to use these ships again. I actually do plan on using them because I'm going to retrofit uh, some of these ships in the future. So why don't actually, I should mention retrofitting right now. that will be a good thing to talk about before we end the episode. So once you, uh, you unlock the ability to retrofit once you research, I guess I'll bring it up. Once you research this technology here, Orbital dry docks. See, uh, it says required for retrofitting ships with new weapons. You also need to have a level three naval station. Um, now, here's the thing with retrofitting ships: you, when you retrofit a ship, you can upgrade. Uh, so let's say let's take a small turret for example. Suppose it had the green laser. I can upgrade a weapon to a similar weapon in the same family. So I could go from green laser to red to UV. I could not change it to a beam, nor could I change it to a kinetic weapon. And importantly, nor could I change it to a point defense weapon. So all of these ships that I designed with beamers, I will not be able to retrofit these beams into actual point defense weapons, into actual point defense weapons. What you can do is you can change out modules and remember, one of the modules you can get is a point defense module. Uh, the other thing you cannot do is to change the armor plating that you have on the ship. Uh, and of course, you can't change the sections. So it's really just about upgrading weapons and tweaking the modules. So what my plan is, and I do this in most of my games, is I keep around my original armor cruisers, unless I really don't have to get rid of them for budget reasons. And then I will upgrade them. See, these armor cruisers are so bad because they are using the bullets, right? Um, and then I will change the modules to add point defense modules to them. And I guess with this ship, I still haven't decided with my weapons whether I'm going to go ballistics or energy. But if I ever invest in some energy weapons, uh, in ballistic weapons, then I can upgrade these mass drivers to sort of armor piercing mass drivers would be the next step up. But at the very least, I would retrofit these to have some point defense. And that way they're still kind of marginally useful, um, even though they won't be as good as my my freshly designed ships. Um, okay, before we end this turn, there's one thing that I completely forgot to do, which is we need to make sure that our trade traffic does not get pillaged by pirates. So we need to design a police cutter which doesn't need to be tough. These are, when I was referring to those uh, in-system defense craft, 
this is what I was talking about, police cutters. These ships cannot travel between systems. They have no faster than light capability. I'm keeping them cheap, so we don't need to give them armor. Uh, let's... Okay, they're going to be an SFS wasp. Notice how it's per pull because it has to be prototyped. The prototype cost will be 163, even though normally it would only be 46. So here's the rule of thumb. In a system which is in a province, so our first three systems are always in a province, but this guy isn't in a province. In a system in a province with a naval base and three police cutters, you will not get any pirate attacks barring any other unforeseen issues right um so that's one of the reasons why i put one naval station everywhere we'll be um, on the prototype right away yeah so we're going to make sure we have three police cutters everywhere and that should basically take care of the pirate problems for us otherwise you have like a random encounter which is pirates come and they blow up one of your freighters which is just annoying and we don't want that to happen right so so we're going to take steps to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to. I think is now is a good time to end the episode. Uh, we learned a lot, I think, about the government. It still feels off to me. I'm going to keep a close eye on that to make sure I didn't like misread or misrepresent something. Um, in any case, thank you very much for watching, uh, and I will see you shortly. Take care.